In this video, I'm gonna to try to tackle this awesome split text animation on Hover. And this is the very first time I'm trying to tackle this problem so you can see what I do when I get stuck and how I think through these complex problems. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And you can see this project over here is going to be the project we're going to create. It's a super cool animation. And for this video, I actually wanna challenge myself to make it so that everything is done in CSS and that we're only using one HTML element for each one of these pieces of text, which I think is going to be rather difficult. So to get started, let's create an index.html file. And you'll also notice I have a styles.css all I've done is I've copied the different colors being used for the background and for the actual text color, just so we don't have to go about hunting those ourselves. And to do that, I just inspect the element and grab the values from there. So what we can do, for example, is we can take our body, we can set the margin to zero, and we can set the background to our background variable that we've created, and that'll just give us this nice background color. We can also change our text color to be that text color. So we'll just say var text color here, and that'll just help us get started with this project. Now this is actually a really easy one when it comes to the HTML because there's almost nothing. So let's just first come in here with a link tag for our CSS, for our styles.css, and then our body, all we're gonna do is essentially have four different items in a list. So let's just put them inside of a UL and we're gonna make each one an LI. So the first one is gonna say home, and then we're gonna have about, we're gonna have work, and we're going to have contact, just like that. I mean, that's it essentially for the HTML. So let's just add some classes in here. We'll have a class that just says list and each one of these li's will have a list item class we'll just copy that down to all of them make sure i put in my quotes here there we go so we'll copy that down there we go that's essentially all the html that we're needing and that's what i hope is that we only need this as our html the only thing that we also might need to have is like a data text here set to home as well and we're going to need this for all of them and i'll explain exactly why i think we're going to need that in just a second but let me just fill this out. So we'll say about work and contact. So my thought process with this project is we're going to have our four pieces of text here. And if we just come, we can open this with live server. We can actually view what this is going to look like. Let me just drag it over real quick. There we go. We have our view here. So we have our home about work and contact. That's our list right now. And all we need to do in our styles is just do a few more changes. I want to change our height here to have a min height of 100 VH. That's going to make our background work better. Also, we need to get rid of our margin from our LI, so we can say dot list item, and we're going to have dot list as our two classes we want to select here. So our list should have no margin and no padding. So list margin, there we go. And we also want to get rid of our list style, I believe it's called. Just set that to none. That's going to get rid of all the dots. There we go. Our list items, we want to have a font weight of bold. Let's change our text size. So we'll say font size is two REM. There we go, it's pretty big and that looks pretty good overall. Maybe I'll make it like 1.5 REM, so it's not quite so big. And we're also going to center this. So to do that, we're just gonna use Flexbox. So we'll say display flex, justify content in the center and align the items in the center. That'll get our text dead center just like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our list items and we're just gonna text align center. There we go. Now we essentially have something that looks very similar to this. It's just our text is a slightly different size. Also, to make it so that my camera is not covering up this bottom portion here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my line item center, remove that. I'm just going to put like a margin on the top of 50 pixels. This is just hard coded. We'll actually make it a little bit less. We'll say 25 pixels. This isn't something that you would actually do yourself. So let's actually change this to padding. Um, actually, sorry, this needs to be on the list. There we go. So then we'll change it to put it below the padding. There we go. So this isn't something you would do yourself. Obviously, you would just want it to be centered. So that way, the only reason I'm doing this is so my camera doesn't cover up the actual content we're working on. And the next thing we need to do is actually do those hover animations. And that's where this data text section is going to come into play because we can actually pull this data in to using before and after elements. And the way I'm thinking about doing this, if we go over here, is as you can see, kind of maybe the way that they're doing this, you can actually see there's a faint line already in between their text. And essentially what they have is they have two pieces of text and they're just showing the top half of one and the bottom half of the other. But that's why you see this very faint like black line going through all the different texts is because they're actually two separate pieces of text and they don't perfectly line up. There's like a pixel in between them. What I wanna do is I wanna have one piece of text. And as soon as you hover, I wanna hide the top half of that text use a before element to show the bottom half of the text, and then use an after element to form the line that goes in between them. 
So I wanna to try to be able to do all of that with just one HTML element. And that's where this data text comes in because we can pull the value in, which in our case is home, and we can actually use that inside of the content field for our before element. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We're just gonna come down, we're gonna say list item. I'm gonna say when we hover over this, what I wanna do is I wanna take the content and I wanna set that to our attribute and our attribute is the data text attribute. So now, whenever I hover over one of these elements, it should hopefully set the content to this content right here. But of course, it doesn't look like anything's happening. Let me just inspect our page to see what's going on. Minimize this here. We have our list item. When I hover, it doesn't look like it's actually adding anything. And that's because, of course, I need to specify the before element. There we go. There you go. Now you can see when I hover these, it adds an extra piece of text. In our case, home or about or work or contact. It's getting added onto our page. Obviously, we don't want it to be added on side by side. We want it to be added on over top. We're going to take our list item, change the position to relative, change the position of our new text to absolute, and now they're going to stack right on top of each other. You'll see nothing looks like it's happening. But if we set, for example, the top position here to like five pixels, you can now see it's offset by five pixels. So really, all we need to do now is show the top half of one piece of text and the bottom half of the other. So to do that, we can actually set the height. So I can set the height to 0.5 em, and that'll show just the bottom portion of the text. And if I do the same thing on my list item, so I can say list item hover, I want to change the height here to 0.5 em. You can now see we got some janky stuff going on. Let's just get rid of this before element for now. If I hover, you can see the height has changed. And if I change the overflow to hidden, there we go. Now it's just showing the top half of that text it looks like, maybe a little bit less than the top half actually. Let me just inspect that to see exactly why it's showing not quite as much as I would hope. We're just going to force state to hover. Now, if we look at the computed tab, we can view the height is 12 pixels tall here. And when it's not being hovered, for example, this is 27 pixels tall. So that's not quite half. And I think it's because the line height is needed to be taken into account. If we look at our line height, I'm guessing it's over one. So we could say like line height. Line height is normal. Uh, so I think that's over one. So we need to take into account our actual line height. So let's just specify a line height here. Whoops. If I can spell properly. Line height of one. And this must be one word. Oh, I'm sorry, line height. There we go, that's our issue. So now we are getting exactly the half the text. So if we wanted to have a line height other than one, we would need to specify this as a variable. Let's say line height is 1.5. Let's just say that's what we want it to be. And then in our list item, we can specify our line height by saying line height is going to be equal to that variable that we just created for line height. And then when we put our height here, we just need to create a calculation, which is going to be our line height variable, line height times 0.5 em. So now this is going to be exactly half the size of our font. And the reason we're multiplying by line height is because line height essentially is 1.5 times our font. So if we have 1.5 line height, our line height is 1.5 of our font. So if we're taking half our font times our actual font size here, that's going to give us half of our font. So now when I hover over one of these, we should hopefully get half the height, but that did not quite work as I would have expected. Let me see what's going on here. We'll just inspect this again. And we'll force the state to be hover again. So our height is set to 0.5 em. That's not right. Oh, it's because we need to make sure this height is on both the hover of our items. There we go. Now we're getting exactly half. So I just need to make sure it was on both the before element and the actual element itself. Now we don't want the actual content for our about and our work section to move up. So instead of making this position absolute, we don't need that anymore. What we need is we need to make it so that this element only shows the bottom half because right now they're both showing the top half. Like if I put this content back in here, I think they'll both just show the top half side by side. Yeah. So we want one to show the bottom half and the other to show the top half. So I need to think about the best way to do that. I believe what we need to do is first we need to make it so that the list item has a display here of flex and a flex direction of column. That way at least they'll show up on top of each other, I believe. Um, not quite. Let me inspect to see what's going on here. Force the hover state. We have our before element and they're just showing up on top of each other. Oh, I guess actually no, the other home is showing up below. And that's because our overflow is set to hidden. Hmm, I'm trying to think if this is possible with one element. It really, I want it to be. But I'm not sure if it is. Mm -hmm -hmm. What we could do is we could change and make the before, okay, I have an idea, I have an idea. So we can, no, that wouldn't work. I was thinking we could make the before and after element the text itself, but that wouldn't work. 
because we need the line to be the after element or the before element. So it might be possible that we do need to have multiple elements to make this work, but I really don't like the idea of doing that. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Well, let's get rid of our overflow hidden so we can see what actually is happening. Yeah, we have our two pieces of text right next to each other, side by side like that, which is kind of what I expected. So this has a height, which is half of its normal height, so it's only showing half the text. This one's also supposed to be only showing half the text. We can set the overflow to hidden on it to see if it's doing what we expect. It looks like it's not showing up anything at all. Let me just inspect. We'll force this hover state. And we'll look at that before element. It has a height of zero. So it's taking line height times 0.5 EM. Oh, I guess we never gave it a font size potentially, but it should inherit its font size. Let's just give it a hard-coded font size of 1.5 REM. Yeah, that didn't make any difference. Interesting that it would have no, oh, I guess we need to specify width maybe. 100%. No. Let's let's just look at it again real quick. Oh, force state hover on the before element and it has no height. Why does it have no height? Let's see if I just hard code a height value in here. Height is 50 pixels. Still it's not showing up. Get rid of the overflow hidden. Oh, it's because it's outside the container of its parent, potentially? Interest. Or maybe it was just showing up right over top of the other one. Let's see. Not 100% sure. Either way, I don't think this is going to be possible with one single element, which saddens me quite a bit. But that's okay. What we can do is we can use multiple elements. So we could just have our li here, and then we could have our text, which we're just going to put in a span that says text. There we go. That's our text itself. <laughs> put our data text on that as well. And now what we can hopefully do is when we hover over our list item, we can take the text and actually make it visible, or we can hide it, but put a before and after element inside of it to give us the top and the bottom portion. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna change this to dot text. So when we hover the list item, I wanna get the text directly inside of it, and I wanna get the before element, and I wanna set it to that data text, which should in our case should be home, yep. And then the height is going to be half the height here. Position is going to need to be absolute potentially. We're just gonna get rid of that for now though. And then on hover for our list item, we don't wanna change the height at all. All we want to do is we want to, I guess I want to remove the text that's inside of here. I would not be able to do that. <laughs> so we need to have something that actually looks a bit more like this. So we're going to have our text on the outside, which we need to hide. So this is going to be a span with the class of main text. And then we're going to have this is going to be split text. There we go. That should work. So now when we hover our list item, I want to take the main text and I want to essentially set the display to none. There we go. So now when I hover, that main text will disappear and as you can see, everything's kind of wonky because of that. And then what I want to do is I want to make the other text inside of here actually show up. So let's get rid of that height property. So if we just force the state for hover on our home, text here. Let's see what happens. For state hover, you can see that we're not getting any before or after elements. Oh, it's because we should put this as split text. There we go. Now we have our before element for our home. So if we just refresh our page, we hover our home, nothing changes. That's perfect because we're changing our text here. If we specify the color here to be white, we should obviously see the text turns white which means that we're using this new split text here in place of our original text. So I can copy this down for our after element as well. And I wanted to have the same text. So now we have both pieces of text showing up, which is great. So now we can select our list item. We can get rid of all this display flex stuff up here. So we can put it inside of our split text. So now they should hopefully stack vertically. There we go. Now they show up right below each other, which is kind of what I wanted. Perfect. I can set the line height here. So I know for a fact I want the line height to be one. I'd want them to be right next to each other. I don't want any space at all between these elements. 
that's good. Um, let's see, I need to have the height be half, so we don't even need to worry about this line height thing anymore, because we already know we're manually setting it to one. So we can just get rid of that line height variable, get rid of that here, doesn't matter. Now we have both of them at half height, and we want to set the overflow to hidden. How does that look? Yeah, they're both half height, but now we just need the bottom one to essentially be the bottom half of the height. So I think I'm going to need to be positioning things absolutely in order to do that. So our split text is going to have a position of relative, and then both of these are going to have a position of absolute. There we go. So now they're kind of just showing up right over top of each other. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that they're centered. So to do that, we want our split text to be centered. So let's make sure we text align center there. Or actually, we shouldn't even need the text align center. Instead, what I want to do is I'll just make our list item a display of flex, and then I'll justify the content in the center. That should fix the problem. Not quite. Let's just see what happens when we do a hover. I'm just going to force the hover state again to see what we're dealing with. Hover. Oh, actually, sorry, should be on this list item. Force state hover. There we go. So we have our span, which has the before and the after element. Oh, our span has no size. That's the problem, because it has no text inside of it. OK. So what we could do <clears throat> is I think we actually might be able to use the split text on our main text here. And we just change the color. Yeah, yeah, this might work. So instead of dealing with main text, we have our split text now. So when we hover this, where our split text is the only one doing anything. We don't even have to worry about this main text thing here. What I want to do is I want to take the color, set the color to transparent for our split text. So that'll hide it. There we go. So when we hover it, actually, I want this to be only on hover. List item hover. List item hover. Get the split text. And I want to hide it. Color transparent. So as you can see, that's hiding the text, which is perfect. And then I want the before and after element to show up in place of that. So. Let's just see if they are showing up right now. So when we hover over our list item, we should hopefully have our before and our after element. And they are showing up, but of course they have zero uh, width, it looks like. So let's set the width on them to 100%. Do that for both of them. That did not fix the issue, but we could probably fix it by saying left zero, right zero. And do that for both of them. That still did not fix it. Let's see what's going on here. Force that hover state again. It's really handy being able to do this. You can check inside of here. So our before is the correct size. Our after is the correct size. Oh, of course, we need to specify our color. So we can say color is going to be, what do we want? Our accent color, our text color. That's what we called it. Let's see if that makes a difference. It should have but it doesn't look like it is. Force state hover. Inside of here, we have a before element, which has the text color. Let's just manually set the color to white. Still not showing up. And it should have that data text. Oh, of course, we don't have our actual data text inside of there. Let's copy that over. There we go. Now we have our data text. There we go, perfect. Now it's showing that home section at the top. We want this one to have essentially a bottom of zero. So now they're both showing up you know, above and below each other, which is what we want. But now we need to offset this one by 50% so it has the correct portion showing. So we can say translate in the y direction by 50%. That should move it up so actually we need negative 50% potentially. No, that, that's not quite what we want. We need to essentially show the bottom half of this element instead of the top half. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. What we could do is we could say that we want the display here to be flex. And we could justify or align our items on the flex end. Would that work? Let's get rid of our translate here. That looks like it actually did work because if I just put my translate back in, I just do like positive 50%. You can see we get the bottom and the top half of the word separated. But if I remove this, we now have it looks like nothing changes when I hover, which is exactly what we want. If I, for example, uncomment this section out, we get just the top half. Comment this section out, we get just the bottom half. So now each one of these is a different top and a bottom. Now to make this a little bit better, the code, I'm just going to change our list item hover here 
I'm going to change our split text for before. And I want to just combine together all the things that they share, because they actually share a lot of stuff between the before and after element. So what we can do is we can take the position, the content, the height, the overflow, left, right, and color. All of this is the same between them. All of that. The only thing that's different is this one has the display flex information, while the other one does not. So we can get rid of this entire selector here, which should still work as before. Not quite, of course, I messed something up. Let me make sure everything is the same as it was between them. So, oh, we had to put the bottom property. So bottom zero. Get rid of that. There we go. Now nothing's changing, which is exactly what we want. So when we hover over them, we want it to essentially initially start out looking like this. And we can get rid of this main text stuff because we don't have a main text anymore. Get rid of that. We just have our split text. Now the reason I have to put a split text inside of our list item is because our list item is the thing that we're going to put the line inside of because we can't create a third before or after element. We only have two elements to work with. So all of this, I believe, is correct. I wonder if we even need this display flex. Actually, yeah, we do. We don't need line. Oh, we do need line height. Yeah. So all of this we need. Yep. This is all good. Now the next step that I want to work on is to make it so that it kind of tilts. So as you can see, when we hover, it kind of has this like tilty animation. I believe they're using skew for this. They're easy, either using skew or like rotate. We're going to try skew though. I believe that's what they're doing. So we'll say in the after element, we're going to have essentially an animation. That is what we're going to play, I believe. And yeah, it should be an animation. Yeah, we'll try animation. So we're going to say skew left. And we're just going to give it a duration of like 200 milliseconds. Timing function. We'll say ease in out. And we're going to specify forwards as the direction. So all of our keyframes in our animation are going to be applied after the animation finish. So we'll say keyframes or skew left. There we go. And what I essentially want to do is I want to take the transform. Or I'm sorry, at 100%. So at the end of our animation, our transform for our skew in the x direction, uh, let's just try like 10 pixels. I never really deal with skew ever. So I'm not 100% sure the best way to do this. Let me uh, inspect our page, see what's going on when we apply our hover state. There we go. And this is for our after element. So our animation should be skewing it. Let me just hard code a skew value. So we'll say transform skew. Uh, it looks like we need to use degrees. So 10 degrees kind of gives us that looking skew. Let's try like 20, 30, maybe like 20. 20, I think, is about what they had for this one. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with 20. So we need to change this. Actually, let's do 15, 15 degrees. So now when we hover, you can see it kind of skews itself off to the side. And I think we actually should be able to do this with a transform instead, or a transition, I'm sorry, because we set the transition to be on just the transform property. And we make it 200 milliseconds ease in and out. Let's we'll see if that does the same thing. Not quite. Okay, I was a little worried it wouldn't be able to do the same thing, unfortunately. What we could do to get around that is we could specify like the opacity of this is zero. Or actually, oh no, we'd have to set the transition on the thing for not hover. So let's say list item split text after. There we go. So the transition's already there. Nope, that still doesn't do it. Even if we set the skew here to whoops zero to start, let's see if that does it. No. It's, I think it's because we're like making the thing appear. We would need to have it have a content property of nothing to start. That might fix it. There we go. Okay, that does fix it. Unfortunately, it doesn't animate out though, because the content just disappears. Hmm. <laughs> Because essentially we only want the content to disappear once the animation finishes. And we can't animate the content property. What we could do though is we could take this animation. We could leave the animation in. So let's just get rid of that. Put the animation back in. And that should work, right? Yeah, it does work. But unfortunately it doesn't animate away. Hmm. <laughs> And think of the best way to make the animation go away. I guess we could put a different animation on it for when it's not being hovered. So we could say like list item split text after. Here we're going to have an animation 
that would be skew your left, but we want it to go like backwards. And we want it to be reverse, I believe, what we call it. Yeah, we'd reverse, and I think what we want is at 0%. I wonder if we can even animate the content property. I mean, I doubt it. We actually can, it seems like. So the content here would be ATTR, data, text. I don't even know if that would work. No, doesn't seem to work at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because here we have content, which is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, for now, we can figure this out in a little bit. We don't have to worry about this right now. So let's just leave it as is. We're going to have our skew right as well. Our skew right is going to be for our before element. And it's going to be essentially the same thing. But we're going to skew in the negative direction. Is that kind of what this looks like? Not quite. They actually look like they both skew in the same direction. So let's try skew left. Yeah, okay. They both skew in the exact same direction. We don't even need two animations. We can just call this skew. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now we just need to make the line that goes between them. And that's actually, I think, pretty easy. We just want the list item on hover. We want to get the before element give it some content, which is just empty. We want to give it a like a width and a height that's going to start at 0 and 0. Well, actually, I guess we could just give it a normal size and use scale. Let's say we want the width to be 120% because we want it to be a little bit bigger than the word. Let's say 110%. The height is going to be 10 pixels. I'm not really sure, maybe 5. And background color is going to be white. Actually, no, the background color is our accent color. So it's just our text color. There we go. Let's see if that shows up. It does show up. Five pixels is way too big. We'll do two pixels. There we go. I want the position to be absolute. And of course, we need to make sure our list item itself has a position of relative. There we go. OK, 110% is a little bit big, so we'll do 105%. That also seems a little big. What's 100% look like? still pretty big. These things are quite wide. Let me just inspect our list item to see. So our list item is pretty wide. It's wider than I thought it would be. It's probably because we're doing the display flex stuff inside of it. <laughs> what if I set the width to uh, max content? There we go. And we'll put the display flex information back. I guess we could just do text align center. No, we would need to have margin auto. Margin zero auto. There we go. So what I can do is I can come up to our list item, get rid of this information. We want margin zero auto. And then I did width is max content. There we go. Now our line is the exact size of each one of these, which is perfect. We can change it back to like 110%. OK. And we need to make sure we center it. So we'll do like left is negative 5%, right is 5%, I'm sorry, 105%. We don't even need the width at that point. Actually, no, we do. There we go. So now it's perfectly centered. We can even get rid of this right, I think. Yeah, it'd still be centered. Now we just need the top to be 50%. And then in order to make it actually perfectly in the center, an easier way to do this would be to, yeah, top 50% and then transform Translate in the y direction, negative 50%. There we go. It's dead in the center. That's exactly what we want. Now we want the border radius to be 50%. So it's got rounded edges. I'm sorry, not 50%. We'll just make it like 20 pixels. That gives us a pill shape, which is what we have over here. And now we just want to scale it. So I believe all we need to do is just say transform scale. And I want to start the scale at 0. And then I want to animate it to a different scale. So we can come in here. We can just say, like, scale. And all I'm going to do is set the scale to 1. And we can say animation is going to be scale over 200 milliseconds, ease in, out. And we want it to be in that forwards direction. There we go. It's kind of growing in. 
it looks like it's maybe not quite lining up with the exact center of the text. Let me see, we'll inspect here. Force the hover state. There we go. If we look at our before element and we look at each one of these, so this is at the top of the line and this is overlaying the whole line. So clearly our line is not in the right position where we want it to be. We want our line to be moved up by like a couple pixels. Oh, I know exactly the problem. So if we look here, we have multiple transforms. We have one right here and we have one right here. So an easy way to get around this is we can just say calc of 50% minus one pixel because that's half of our height since we have our height hard coded and there we go. That works just like we want it to. Now all we need to do is also change our color in the skew animation. So we'll say color is white. That did not change. Oh, I'm sorry, in our skew animation. There we go. Now it changes our color to white. We want to make sure our Z index is set up properly. So this should have a Z index of one. There we go. So it shows up over top of everything. And now we just need to get the reverse of the animation to work. Because right now we had the actual animation working. And once I copy down, you know, make split text work for all of these. So this would be split text, split text, split text. We can get rid of the data text on the list items. There we go, and there we go. And we just want this one to say about, this one to say work, and contact. There we go. So now they all should be working. And now all we have left is that reverse animation, like I said, which is going to be a little bit tricky, but I'm hoping it's not too hard as long as I can kind of remember how animations work. So the reason that the animation is snapping back to normal is because our content property is essentially set to nothing. And our item is like disappearing completely because when it's not being hovered, it has no content at all. So like to make our line work in reverse, we could just take our list item, the before property, and we could just make sure it always has content. So we could say content is always there. And just make sure all these other properties so like position needs to be there. Um, let's see. All these widths and heights need to be there. So we can take our width and height are going to go up there. Top and our height are going to go up there. Our scale is going to go up there. And actually, we don't even need an animation, I believe. I think I drastically overcomplicated this. We're just going to move all of this content up into here, including the Z index. There we go. So now all we need to do in here is say transform. And we can take our scale and we want to change it to a scale of one. And then we can just do a transition. So I can say transition is going to be on the transform property over 200 milliseconds ease in and out in the forwards direction. And I believe that should work. Nope, it did not. <laughs> okay, let's inspect it and we'll see exactly why it's not working. But I believe I'm on the right track here. So hover, it has no before element at all. Interesting. Oh, I spelled list item wrong. There we go. Now it's there. And if we remove the forced state for our hover. OK, now it's not even doing the animation. Interesting. Let me think this through. If we just get rid of the that, I didn't fix it. Because it should be doing the transforming on our scale, because that's the only thing that changes between hover. Everything else is the same. The only thing that changes is our scale here. So let me see exactly what's going on. We'll just again inspect, force the hover. And let's look at that before element. So our transition position is incorrect. Oh, it has forwards at the end of it. That would explain the problem. There we go. And now we have the forwards and the backwards version of the animation. I think I can do the exact same thing with these other animations. But to kind of explain why this worked, essentially, the reason our animation was disappearing is because our before element had no content unless we were hovering, because we only defined it when we were hovering. So what I did is I defined our entire before element before the hover, and then I'm saying, hey, when we hover, just change the scale. Because right now it starts at a scale of zero, so it's hidden, essentially. I want to do the same thing with our text up here. So we want to take our list item, we want to get our split text, and we want to get the things inside of it. So we'll say list item, we want to get the split text, we want to get the before, and we want to get the after element. So I'm just going to copy this, get rid of the hover. I want to copy up essentially all of this content for now. And we'll see. We want the position to be absolute. We want the content to always be that. Yep. We want the height here to be always this height. Overflow hidden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing that we want to 
be changing here is the color by default here should be transparent, so it's not actually visible. And we want the user select to be none. So the user cannot interact with it. Same here. User select none. So essentially it's hidden from the user. Then what we can do is down here when we hover, we can change our color to our text color. And then, <laughs> but I want to animate the text to that white color. So we don't want to start our color at transparent, do we? We could just start our height here at zero. And then we could start our text at this text color up here. Get rid of that user select none. We don't even care about that anymore. And then what we could do is we could say that we want our color here to be white. There we go. And we can get rid of the hover on this. We don't need the hover. Get rid of the animation. Get rid of this. Let's see if that works. Nope. Clearly something's broken. Oh, well, of course, something's broken. We don't have our skew. So let's take our skew here, add it into our hover, and we can get rid of that, that. Okay. It's interesting. So right now it's working. The animations are working, but we don't have the actual transition. So all we need to do is add the transition and this should be it. So we can say we want to transition and we want to transition only on certain properties. We want to transition on the color. So we can say transition on the color, 200 milliseconds, ease in out. Okay, that's working. Then we want to be able to transition on the transform property. 200 milliseconds, ease in out. There we go. And still snapping back to place though. So not quite what I wanted. Oh, it's because our height is being set to zero automatically. <laughs> if we make our height 0.5, that is working. It's kind of got a weird look to it, though. Let me think, let me think. This split text, we don't really want to show back up until after the animation has finished. That would make sense. So the normal split text, we don't want the color to show up until after the animation finishes. Hmm. Well, what we could do is we could say that we want to, when it's being hovered, have a transition that has a delay of 200 milliseconds. So it's going to be on the color property. It's going to have a zero millisecond duration, 200 millisecond delay. And we want this to be when it's not hovering, maybe? No, that's not quite what we want. So, okay, we put this back onto here. What I want is the transition delay to be zero. Milliseconds, of course. Not quite. Hmm, let's inspect this to see what's going on. We almost have it correct because the backwards animation was working for a bit. All right, let's look at this. We're gonna force state to hover. And we're going to look at split text itself. So the color is transparent and the transition is a zero millisecond duration and a 200 millisecond delay. So after 200 milliseconds, then the color is going to transition into the actual color it's moving to. So we need the transition delay here to be 200 milliseconds. And we'll specify the transition up here. So, okay. Let's see. I think this is how we want to do it. So transition delay is 200 milliseconds. The transition is zero milliseconds and a zero millisecond delay. So essentially it's instantaneous. Otherwise, oh, actually no, the delay here is 200 milliseconds and then the delay here we want to be zero milliseconds. I think this will fix it. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so the reason why this works is what happens is when we go and we hover our element, we want it to instantly hide. So we set our transition delay to zero milliseconds, which means instantly the color is going to change to transparent. Then when we stop hovering, we want the transition from the color to only happen after the animation finishes. So when we're not hovering, the transition here has a 200 millisecond delay. So it's going to wait 200 milliseconds, which is the exact duration of our animation. And then the color for our normal text is going to return. So what's happening is when we hover, immediately our normal text disappears and the new text takes its place. 
Then when we unhover, the normal text is going to wait 200 milliseconds and then reappear. And we can see this by changing this text to like test, for example. And now you can see if I make sure that it's the same length as our home. There we go, it's pretty much the same length. You can see that that's working kind of as we expect, but you'll notice that we actually can see our other text, which is fine, I guess. That's not really a big deal. Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, because we can see this text, which is okay. That doesn't matter at all. I guess we could change the opacity here to zero. And then here we could change the opacity to one. Okay, I think that might still work if we change this back to home. It's doing some weird things though when I have that opacity. Maybe we don't want that. Just as long as I put user select of none on here, it means you can't highlight that text. It's so like we can highlight our normal text, but we can't highlight the skewing text, which I think is fine. That looks pretty good. So we've essentially created this entire animation. I think it's pretty much exactly the same. The only thing that's different is we're not moving the text around. That's just like complicated JavaScript math that's really not fun to watch, so I'm not going to be doing that. But we kind of have this skew text right here, and I think it looks really good, and it's pretty much exactly the same. And if you want the effect to be more or less, you could change the skew more or less. Or if you thought you needed to move the text to the side, like, you know, it looks like they might move the text to the left or the right, what you could do is you could come in here and on top of doing your skew, which we don't even need the animation for anymore, what we could do is we could say, oh, you know what, we're going to translate as well in like negative 10 pixels or something. And you know, you can move the text to the side if you needed, or like negative one pixel. It wouldn't need to move by very much. And it would just give you a little bit more of an animation. It's entirely up to you, but I think just like how we have it right now, it looks really good. And that's all it takes to create this cool CSS animation. If you're interested in other live coding challenges, I have a bunch of them linked over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.